If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. We'll go ahead and draw a picture of the two concentric shells that are described in the question. We've shown the cylindrical shell with the smaller radius in black and then the cylindrical shell with the larger radius in red. In part A, we're being asked to calculate the magnitude and direction of an electric field that's outside of the smaller cylindrical shell but inside the larger cylindrical shell. So we can use Gauss's law and specifically we will use it as it applies to cylindrically symmetrical situations. Now in such situations we know the electric field is equal to the linear charge density divided by 2 pi epsilon times the distance away from the cylindrical shell. Now for part A the value of R is going to be 4 centimeters and if we look at this picture we could again see that that 4 centimeters lies outside of the inner cylindrical shell but inside the outer cylindrical shell. If we were to draw a cylindrically shaped Gaussian surface at a radius of 4 centimeters we could see that that Gaussian surface would indeed enclose the inner cylindrical shell but not the outer one. So when we apply this formula we only have to use the linear charge density of the charge that's actually enclosed by the Gaussian surface. So in that case it would be the charge present on the inner cylindrical shell. So we can go ahead and calculate the electric field by only having to use the linear charge density of the inner cylindrical shell. So here we have plugged in the linear charge density of the inner cylindrical shell. The value of epsilon is given with its standard unit. And then again, we're calculating the electric field at a distance of 4 centimeters. And when we simplify that, we can see that the magnitude of the electric field is 2.3 times 10 to the 6th newtons per coulomb. The fact that the electric field came out with a positive value indicates that the electric field at the 4 centimeter mark is radially outward. It's going to be difficult to draw, but if we tried to, we would have electric field lines that are pointing outward away from the inner cylindrical shell. So again, the correct answer for the direction for part B is outward. Now in parts C and D, the distance has changed to 8 centimeters. So this time, when we measure that distance from the center of the cylindrical shells out to 8 centimeters, we can see that our Gaussian surface, which is indicated by this blue circle, would include both the inner and the outer cylindrical shell. So when we calculate the electric field and we plug in for the linear charge density, we're going to have to account for both cylindrical shells. So we'll combine or add both the inner cylindrical shell charge density and the outer cylindrical shell charge density. So in that case, the expression for the electric field at the 8 centimeter distance would look like this. Again, notice we're adding the inner charge density to the outer charge density. We'll go ahead and plug in all the known values. So we've gone ahead and plugged in all the known values. Note that the distance is 8 centimeters, though we converted it into meters. When you simplify that, you get a value of negative 4.5 times 10 to the positive 5 newtons per coulomb. The negative sign indicates that the electric field is pointing radially inward. So the direction, which is part D of the question, will have to be given as inward. The magnitude of the electric field would just be positive 4.5 times 10 to the positive 5 newtons per coulomb because, of course, magnitudes are just the value only without that negative sign. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel. You're welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I will do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.